We got some cool stuff around here. We're uh, high tech rednecks, man. High tech <laughs> rednecks. <laughs> yeah, no, we're good. Um, is there the the red thing flashing on the camera? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Coach Sneed. Yeah. What's up, brother? This is awesome. This is really cool. I am so pumped to be here, man. You know, it's like yeah. being able to be caught on this co- this podcast with you guys is is an honor. I mean, because I've coached you guys. And, and so I saw that progression through high school, and then you guys went off on your own, and now we're here back. And then to see who you guys are as men now and being able to use you guys in the capacity that you guys have found your calling and your passion and using the McKenzie contracting business that, that fits so many different bills and, and, and being in that that type of profession that you're able to do those things for people, give them answers to problems that they may have in their, you know, landscape, in their businesses, whatever it might be in, in, in site development, but do it in a way that, that honors the American tradition, which is something that makes me proud of you guys on, and also uh, in a way that, man, it, it, it's professional, but... The thoroughness and detail in which you guys deliver is like top shelf stuff. Appreciate it. You guys came in and worked on a problem at my place. And I was thinking about this. Like you, you don't buy a house very often. You don't buy vehicles very often. And certainly the issues that I had in my, my property is something you're not going to address over and over and over again. Mm-hmm. You, you do an expansion on your home. You know, you're not going to do that over and over and over again. So you get like one shot. Yeah. And so you're hoping to get aligned with people who are great people to be with. And and obviously, bigger than just being and using somebody that does a good job, but building a partnership with people who, who you can align with. Yeah. And well, you, well, Coach, I'll tell you right now, man, like the biggest, one of the that. biggest things of, like, uh, reasons we've been successful is because of the community in Calvert. Um, you know, we employ people that grew up in Calvert, went to Calvert schools, still keep in touch, still go to church with people in Calvert. I mean, it's like it's definitely a sense of community here, you know, the good old boy system. And I'm I'm proud to be one of the good old boys from here, you know, like three, four generations down the line. And, you know, people can knock that all they want and say they want to get out of here and nothing to do, whatever. But, I mean, I, I like it. You know what I'm saying? Like, in my opinion, that's the proper way it should, it should be. Yeah. You know, 100%. you serve the community you grow up in, you want to live in. And you know what? Anybody who's anybody who's come up through what we've done and, and, and we've been connected with, they end up coming back, even if they leave. Yeah. You know, and that's important. And, and to get back to the, the stuff at my place, just as an example, like three different phases to get us where we're at now. And this is not what this podcast is about, but it speaks to you guys. You guys come in competent, confident, and in six days, you blew it out. And, 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 again, we're not going to go through this ever again. And so knowing that I was able to, to work with some really unbelievable great men right from the top and you guys down to the people who work for you, um, it's just, it's awesome. You yeah. know, and we've been able to do that. You yeah. Know, you know, a J Square Construction did some stuff for us when we renovated our home and moved things around, you know. And that feels good to me because, obviously, those are the people that I'm going back that I may have coached or worked with. Mm-hmm. And that means a lot that, that – our relationships have, have developed a place in that old school community back in the old days when people used to come together and raise a barn together mm-hmm. and, and, and exchange goods because I'm raising this and you're doing this. And so we're going to work together. That's what is happening. Yeah. Right? That's how it should work. And it's, it's cool for me too. being able to do your project. That was cool for me. Cause obviously like we take pride in everything that we do, but you're doing your, your high school football coaches, um, yard and, and project it means a little bit more to me, you know um so that is cool and again what gene was saying like growing up in the community you know a lot of the customers so you do you care about the final product you're not just like gonna go in there and say all right what do i got to do to make money like you know like i'm gonna be talking to coach need you know every month for the next however many years like I want to make sure everything's done correctly and he's happy with the product and it, it puts a little bit more pressure on you, but it's so much more rewarding. <laughs> well, I hope not. hope it's not too much pressure, but no. you guys I, smashed yeah, it. Yeah. No, that's good, man. I appreciate the positive feedback for sure. Yeah. No question. Um, no and, question. And we were just talking earlier, man, like our, the way our 
industry is kind of structured. It is hard because you don't get the repeat business every 30 days or, you know, quarterly or whatever. It's like you go do one project, you're like, okay, well, that's done now. You, yes. know, you, you yeah. might not get a call from that person for yeah. years. Yeah, right? the tree's you cut. Know? You know, it's not going to take – it takes another 200 years for that white oak to get that <laughs> Right, <big. laughs> right. So, you know, it's definitely hard because you're constantly finding new uh, – like the next job and new customers. But so, like, the referral process is huge. It is. Um, it and, is. You know, so but the way you guys have set up your business and the way you care for your employees, the type of – I'm just coming in this parking lot, meeting Cody and seeing the pedigree of young man he is and hearing a little bit about his story speaks to the fact that a business like this generationally is going to continue to last. So your great grandchildren might be cutting down a tree on my property. You know, you never know. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. That in which that kind of brings let me get my shirt off real quick. That brings me into my other point of one of the things that I was going to ask you was, um, you know, kind of our, what I've seen Gene, um, bringing up guys from a young, like a very young age, like Cody, who started here, you're kind of able to mold him and shape him into the thing that you want him to be. Not, not saying like, that kind of sounds like a narcissistic way of putting it, but like uh, an, I guess an ideal employee. Well, they don't come with bad habits, right? right? They're, they're learning, which that comes with its own challenges, right? You got to teach them everything, get them trained, but then you can make sure he's doing it correctly, you know? Yes. Yeah. Um, so that was I was going to come to that because so you were a coach at Huntingtown first when we first met you. Yes. After there, did you go straight? You went to straight to Calvert. Uh, yes. Okay. So, where did you see? Where did you see the hardest part of making that transition? Because when you were at Huntingtown, you maybe had you know however many years you were into it, you had seen that senior grow from a freshman to a senior. He had your habits. He had the habits that you wanted to instill in him. So when you tell and take over a program, you know, and you have these seniors who have been in a different place in in four years, what's the buy-in process for you, like, as a coach, speaking to those seniors? Wow, that's cool. So when we transitioned to uh, Calvert, and I say we because it's it's been a huge community and global effort, uh, we needed to kind of cultivate, you know, a, a faith and belief system. Because we were trying to take kids, not just on the football field, but in life, to a place that they didn't understand. We have two different communities in, in what you're looking at as the nucleus of Huntingtown and, and the nucleus of Calvert. And there is a very diverse community, Calvert High School, that has kids that, that come from a different you know background than others. And, and we'll have young men who are playing football for us who are living in an abandoned, abandoned home mm-hmm. with no heating and air conditioning. And then you'll have others who are very much from what we're used to. And then you'll have others on that upper end that, that you know, mom and dad are going to buy them a car for th- their birthday. Yeah. Not many, mm-hmm. but you do have that. Mm-hmm. Um, but at the end of the day, that could cause division if that's all they focus on. And as you guys know, a healthy business, because it is a business, but at the end of the day, it's truly a team, right? And it's a family if you want this thing to go the way you want it to go. And that's what a football program can be. And then if you want to go that way, well, then we have to find synergy and find a way for these guys to connect. And that was the challenge. When I left Huntingtown, you know, we knew Huntingtown was in a very healthy place. And I, I bought a home in Port Republic, and my mom was living in the basement. This is the home that you guys came and helped us with in our erosion issues. And I want to be embedded in a community that I was living in. That's so cool. And uh, that program that I was at – in 2000 or 1999 through 2002 was the shining light of the Cuff conference in the region of Southern Maryland. And then it, it became fractured. And part of it was because of the great guys like you guys, you know, leaving that district and going to Huntingtown um, for a, a new opportunity. And then this, this, this program down here needed something. And, and we liked the idea of being able to go in there and try to change the way you look at coaching and use the game strategically just as you guys are using your business to impact and transform lives. Yeah. And then more importantly, equipping the young people and the coaches and the community in that pocket of what you're working with to also have the initiative to go out and do the same thing. Yeah. To, to multiply that mission when they leave Calvert High and they go out to their communities or they go beyond, that they become like what you guys are. They come back to the community and they're multiplying that mission where it's bigger than self. It's, yeah. it's not about me, that now I can go out, and if I am, you know, a, a, a big-time, multi-diversified excavating company, right, 
and, and I'm out there doing things like that, but I'm still using that. And I know that I only have maybe one shot to be at the Sneeds home because they're not going to call me back to do excavating every week. I want to make this moment count mm -hmm. and I'm going to give the time to, to, to care and take care of these people. And then I'm going to use this moment to impact and transform that family's life. You guys get a one shot deal. You know, I, I get to do that every day and, and that's what we're, we're trying to do. And then more importantly, you're trying to give me the experience or any other person, the experience that says that, you know what, this is pretty cool. Yeah. And it's, and then these guys came in there and they provided a very professional service to us, but they did it in a way that man encouraged me. Yeah. And, and, and that's what we're trying to do as, as coaches and leaders now in the Calvert high school community. And we were doing it at, at Huntington high. Yeah, you were. Uh, but when you're, when you're now the man in charge, uh, the person who's leading that ship, you know, you, you can kind of use different devices and different means and be more intentional mm -hmm. about what you're doing. And then the byproduct takes care of itself, which is playing good football. That, so I would, I would say yeah. hundred percent, man, I think you've got, you've earned the reputation since 2007, man. Like you're, you're there as more of a mentor than you are a football coach for sure. And I've heard that from 2007 to now, like you've made a name for yourself being a mentor to young men, dude. Thank you. A molder sure. of young men. Yeah, you know, I'm serious, man. It's it's, it's good stuff. Dude. It's very impressive. It's it, it, when you talk about football being the byproduct of it, it's so funny because it's such a small part of it, right? right? When you just go back and you dissect everything that you just talked about, you're taking these men at a very, very vulnerable point in their life, mm -hmm. and eventually turning it into a continual life cycle of service to your community. Yes, because. I mean, it, it's These crazy. guys might be going through something, like I said, if, if they're living in, a, uh, in an abandoned home, maybe their family's incarcerated, they don't have a dad. If we don't give them a different understanding of what life could be, well, then the chains are going to continue, and that pattern is going to result in him pretty much being the same person. Yeah. Now, we can't change anybody. Only good Lord can do that, but we can equip them with the truth, and, and we certainly are here to do that. And, and so directly to take this to where you guys are at, like – you, yes, you have that one shot opportunity to, to impact me and encourage me as the customer who's who's paying into your service. But you have a Cody who's underneath your wings. Mm -hmm. You have other folks who are underneath your wings that you guys as leaders are mentoring and encouraging them. And obviously the byproduct when they feel that they're personally vested and that they have people care for them and show them love and care and demonstrate what a family should look like and create a team environment is they go out and work hard for you guys. Yeah. And then, and then, of course, they're on the front lines. And so when they go out there and represent you well and they do a great job, well, then, like you said, that, that, that type of reputation continues on and carries itself. Absolutely. That's a yeah. huge part of it. It's not like touching on that last point about they, they care about you, you have that relationship. Like, yeah, you were, you were, you were a, a tough coach when you needed to be a tough coach, and you got me fired up in that way. But I think that the, the love that we had for you and the respect that we had for you and the relationship that we had for you – made us want to go die for you on a field. That's all. Awesome. Rather than just somebody being like, shut up and get down and get up. And, you know, there's there's several different ways of coaching where you had a very good blend of mixing that and being also like, we we want to make Coach proud. Like yes. That, it, that, yeah. No, man, you hard. definitely have that in you. And I know you make it a you make a point to incorporate that into your day-to-day, -day, you know. And I, I've heard it from a lot of different people, buddy, because, you know, when we go talk to residential people or whatever – you know, homeowners to get a price. Small talk. Where'd you go to school? You playing sports, whatever. And then, yeah, I played under Coach Franks, right? And they're like, oh, well, yeah, did you play with Snead or whatever? I'm like, yeah, I know mm -hmm. Rick real well. Mm -hmm. You know, and so it's definitely come up a lot, and everybody has very positive things to say about you. Thank so you, you need to know you are – you're getting a reputation in the community. Well, thank you. So you and, can't go uh, anywhere. Thank you. I'm not. I'm not. Yeah. I mean, like, and what else would we do, right? That's right. <laughs> now, now the, the – I want to ask you – the public school system now, mm -hmm. and I haven't been part of it for a long time. Yes. We've been out since 07. Yes. Have you seen the public school system change in the last 15 years dramatically, or is it just something that is like – because you hear all the controversial shit, like what's going on in schools, what's being taught in schools, mm -hmm. what kids are doing. Mm -hmm. You see, like, the, the kids coming out of school and they don't have any work ethic. And then, yep. you, you know, you, there's conversations about it all the time. Mm -hmm. You've been in it. Yes. Knee deep in the trenches. Yes. So what's in our – I'm not talking nationally or statewide. I'm talking in our community, in Calvert. What have you seen change a lot in the last 
10, 15 years in the public high schools? Well, that's a great question. So I think that – let me just try to cover this by expressing a few different things. Let's talk about football, for example. Um, so this year – Instead of trying to motivate our guys, we tried to empower our guys. Because if they feel like they own this, then they're already going to be intrinsically motivated. So if they have some part of it where they feel like they're vested personally and it's theirs, they're going to intrinsically motivate. So bringing in some leaders in, and, and I'm talking to them, because every week this past season, it was a challenge. We had some stuff happen you know, every week, just things you're dealing with. And if you're going to be – connected with your community to that point where it's bigger than football and you're not just trying to figure out how to X and O win a game, but you're trying to take care of this kid's personal needs, which cultivates trust, which helps them play better, um, which helps them just achieve more things in life, then you better be ready for all the other stuff. And, you know, so you have this, these kids who are on this team that if they weren't part of this team and they were in the real world, there's people in our team that they would not know and would not associate with because, you know, I'm just, I'm, I only have a small niche in my life. And because I work a, a nine to five, I work 50 hours a week. I got my own family. You know, my circle is going to be kind of tight. And so the people that I associate with are going to align with some of the values and things that I see. Right. Mm -hmm. And we're not called to be those type of people. Right. Every day you guys get a chance to work on someone else's different property. You are going to get connected with somebody who might look at the world from a totally different lens. Oh, for sure. And then yeah, the people that you. and the people that work for you as well. So I looked at these guys, my two two of my leaders, they were distressed because I'm pushing them, like, what are y'all gonna do about this? How are you gonna handle this? And and then I looked at them and says, If you guys were in the real world right now, you wouldn't be associated with some of the guys in our program because of where they come from, what they do. And it's not uh. because you're, you're, you feel one way or it's just because it doesn't seem practical and effective to align yourself with someone else who has these other things going on in their life. I said, but we're, we're called to build relationships and connect with people to help them see a different truth, not making you better than anybody else, but because you may have a, a little better circumstance in your life right now, you're called to be that brother's keeper and you need to learn that now. And you need to learn that although you may find it easier to raise your family in this little comfortable pod when you're older, it doesn't disassociate the fact that you need to be able to connect and pour into people who may be less fortunate or coming from a different you know, mindset than you. I said, so that's one of it. So when you look at the schools, when I was at Huntingtown, we were in a bubble. And unfortunately, there was kids at Huntingtown when I was there. One of, one of them lived in, in, in my house for a while um, who went underneath the radar because we're Huntingtown. You know, they had at one point, and not throwing shade, but there was one point a yearbook section that had cribs of Huntington High School. It was kind of a spoof off of MTV Cribs, right? Yeah. And so, uh, you know, that that's kind of a radical difference in what you're dealing with at Calvert. But we had a young man who whose mom had her issues. And consequently, he was living out of a home that at any moment a landlord was going to come and evict him because mom was not around. She'd show up. She'd pull his mattress, his gear, put him somewhere else. He'd be there for a short time. Rent wouldn't be paid. He'd be evicted again. Now, this kid pulled up the bootstraps and went to work, ended up playing college ball, ended up having a great career, and now he's serving our country as a department contractor, doing some great things at Dahlgren. And he's got another prolific story. And so I'm not going to go down that route. But the bottom line is he went under the radar at Huntington High School because they were about Huntington High School, looked a certain way, acted a certain way had all the things. And because he wanted to assimilate with them, you know, he, he, he tried his best and he went under the radar. And a lot of his teachers and a lot of the people wouldn't know that he was living on my couch for a while, Yeah, that he needed that support. Down there, you have issues at Huntington or Calvert High School that you know we have those issues. And so we're going to not deny it. And I think that's probably the biggest issue with our school system. It's like, you know what? Drugs are an issue. Alcoholism is an issue. Young men growing up at homes with, with no father is an issue, and it's an issue everywhere. Everywhere. If you're at Calvert, there's going to be some kids coming in with drugs. It was that way when we were in high school. If you're Huntington, it's the same thing. But if we sit here and act like it doesn't happen and try to continue to push things under the rug, I think that that becomes an issue where we lose transparency, that people, you know, you know that there's a problem. I know there's a problem. So let's just talk about how we're going to address it. And if we're going to address it this way, if we're going to give credence and value to the people like us who are doing things beyond the classroom, 
that we can connect with kids. Because a kid, if a kid's going home and he has no heat and air conditioning or no working washer and dryer, I'm sorry, he's going to have a hard time connecting to the classroom teacher talking about 2X plus B equals C because that may get him into that college he wants to go to or get him graduated when his belly is not full. Yeah, he's worried about where his next meal is going to come from. Absolutely. So <laughs> when it comes to after school and he connects with somebody who cares, and that's why as coaches we have a responsibility not to coach football but to coach the heart of the people and use that moment because if I didn't coach football, I wouldn't be a connector. You guys wouldn't be connected to those kids. So in that moment, hey, let's talk to these kids and let's help encourage them and then give them a reason for coming back to school. And now, you know, now we can hopefully start giving them, like I said, a different truth, a different plan to go out in life. So, and then what we need to do as a school system, I'd say, is, is, is empower and encourage these positive lights. Because really what we are, and social media has a lot to do with this, we're promoting on social media, what people want to hear and see. Sure. And, and so mm-hmm. if, if, if we're on social media and we have all these avenues of things that are happening that promote some positivity in our school system, then that stuff should be celebrated. And the people connecting those dots and working hard on that front to help those things happen should be pushed to the top. And I think that has a matriculation effect because now people can see and breathe the positivity. But if we aren't, if we are not, intentional and forthright with doing that well then guess what the social media presence that we're going to have is going to present the negativity so you know what do you want to do and, and i think we have to promote so I, and yeah. to answer your question along you know a long about way i think the issues have always been there but it become more of a problem because that's the squeaky wheel because it's easy for us to attack and talk about those things mm-hmm. You talk about curriculum-based stuff. Well, there's a lot of curriculum-based stuff that's come down the, the pipe that the state has told us we have to do. Mm-hmm. And, um, and that's really what my question was. Yeah. Is like, is it – because I, I want to follow up with that with you in being able to talk about your faith and have like a faith-based type approach mm-hmm. to dealing with young men. Is that shunned upon or does anybody like like look down on that, for how you handle that with your – with your players or with your classroom or whatever? No. Um, I, I think it's no different than like if, if – if school systems and everybody else and, and, and every, you know, because, again, if they're going to tell us what we're supposed to teach or what's going on in our classrooms, then I think all things have to have the opportunity to be taught. Sure. And so when it comes to my young men, I don't force my faith and my belief system on them. But I tell you what, anytime I have a chance to stand in front of anybody new in our program, be it parents and family members, community members, I want them to understand what what motivates me and where my intrinsic values come from because yeah. that's what guides all of this that's such a big part of you as a person yeah like it that's your story know. man yeah but just you, you, it, you need to keep doing a good job of being proud of that too yes yeah. like don't let people think that it's wrong right or yeah. convince you to feel like it's wrong you can't you, you, you can. can't do that no because um, at the end of the day like i said to you guys earlier if we're going to help change lives then we're only in that process of helping i mean i learned a long time ago when i watch young men go out on their own and find their own way after pouring into them and hoping that they live a more righteous life and then they're making some egregious decisions, I had to learn, like, dude, like, I have no control over that. Like, yes, we've equipped them with the truth, but if they choose to do their own thing, that's part of their walk and their journey, and you have to let go. But we're called, you know, if we understand what the truth is and we believe in what our faith should is, then we have the responsibility to to at least share that by the way we live our own life. And and so when I sit there and I'm in front of our kids and our parents, then they're going to understand my, my, my story, my testimony, right down to why and how I got into coaching when I was 17 years old. Yeah. You know, it's important. Yeah. And so the reality is sometimes um, things are tough and hard, to, to, to deal with, but then at the same time, it makes what we're doing maybe even even a small circle that much more important. It's so big. So you tighten up. It's so big. It's a bigger circle than you think. Man. Yeah. Well, it is, but yeah. you tighten up. You, you, yeah. know, you tighten up in that, hey, dude, if it's not me, then who's it going to be kind cool. of deal, yep. you know? I love that about you, what you just said, if, if not me, then who? And I feel like that's always been your approach. Is you're just a very service-implemented man. Like you look at the grand scheme of service, it's 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 very selfless and it's something extremely admirable. Um, and I hope that 
you understand the impact that you have. Well, I appreciate it. I'll tell you what, just a quick example of that. Uh, we got the opportunity and a wonderful blessing to uh, uh, play well enough and earn a spot and play in state championship game. Yeah, man, that's one of my talking yeah, points. Yeah, that was one of the talking points. Holy smokes, dude. You made it all the way. Yeah. Came up short. Yes. Give us a rundown of the season, the final game, the whole deal. Man. I will. I will. But I can't skip over this part. So okay. the day after – I'm sitting in my truck, and I'm trying to stay low-key. So I got my nine-line gear on, and I got my nine-line hat on, and I just kind of want to drive around and just take things in and get away. And I start thinking about people that I need to immediately thank. And and so, as you guys know, with the podcast, some of the best ways to communicate to people is through messages, video, video messages. Mm-hmm. And so I've gone beyond the emails no longer. Like, we're, we're on a band app where we can connect with our parents and our kids, and I drop video messages and send out information that way because that's they cool. can see and understand my expressions as I'm sharing it out. Yeah, that's cool. One of the things, aside from the fact that our, our cheerleading squad and our band came through, man, our police department, I, I, I've never been a part of a procession like that before. And, I mean, there was just rows of, of vehicles and cars and and. You know, so we're getting down there in the field. I was getting ready to leave and get on the charter bus. And, dude, I broke down because I'm like, this is incredible. You know, like I, I, you know because I, I, I was in the Marine Corps. And, man, these the police officers in our community, service-oriented service people, it, they've gotten crapped on. And, and I hate it. And, and – and, and um, people just don't know what it is when they sign their lives over on a dot line to serve this community, to be the buffer between the crime and crap that happens here in your own community and then the people who do that to be that buffer between us and other countries. When you sign up for that, that's a whole nother level of, of, of character that people just don't understand and so when when the countless number of police officers decide to take time and and escort us through calvert county to this game and it's just you can see rows of it back there in front and behind us it was it was inspiring because here they are serving us in another way and we're just a football team it broke me it was incredible you're not you're not just a football team well, I appreciate that, but it was, it was incredible. <laughs> so, so to get to your point, man, a lot a lot of people don't know, what, you know, what goes into those games, and and we all share stories. But it was kind of cool leading up to that because if you guys know our social media presence is pretty good. Uh, we have Dave Fitz, uh, who does a phenomenal job, uh, who has some phenomenal experience that helps him do what he does in in our social media branding, and of course, Miss McIntosh, as you guys know so well. Who, who is a big part of taking care of the pitchers and, and just capitalizing on so many great memories for our kids and our families. Those two people just do a great job of really creating a way in which people can connect with what our kids are experiencing. And and so we start feeling this whole thing as the season's going on. Southern Maryland, 14 schools, won 28 playoff games. Five were in the state semifinals three in a state finals out of 14 schools. It's incredible. And it and, and so now we're getting a contingency of colleges coach come on. And I, and, I, and I wear that badge with honor. And, and when these guys come in, we are trying to create a very strong nucleus between the coaches in Southern Maryland because, you know, we, we get it. We just beat PG County in the All-Star game, Chick-fil-A All-Star game, 30 to 13, and they have dudes. I mean, they had – Guys in the front defensive line who were just, they're going to South Carolina. Grown men. Yeah, they're dudes. <laughs> right. yeah. And we beat them 30 to 13. And we yeah. don't have a single kid who, who, who has signed, you know, a Division One scholarship yet. So what does that speak to? Well, yeah, so that is, that's a strange thing, man. Yes. You don't have any D1 no, commits. No, but you're, but, but you're beating guys that. And they have 24 schools in PG County. You have 14 in SMAC. It's, I'm, I'm telling you right now, you I understand why it happens. You know why it happens. Yes. And I, I think there's two different ways to look at it. There's there's the coaching aspect of it, and then there's the player buying into that coach. The relationship that you have with that coach means so damn much on that field to the point where it's like, we say this all the time. You, this is something that you've – hoka hey. Yes. Today's a good day to die. Yep. And it doesn't mean what we're really just saying. Like, that was our thing. I mean, you st- we still say it to guys we see around the county, man. Yep. Like, it's it's our thing. But 
we were willing to do whatever needed to be done for our brothers that day to buy. We bought in. You have yes. to buy in to everything. And you have maybe because there's all of those different aspects going on that you talked about, but there's some of the challenges at Calvert, you have those going on at some of those other PG schools. And maybe you don't have as much commitment from the coaching staff because they're just not able to fully commit to that many individuals being on that trajectory of those different paths. Right. Whereas maybe we can concentrate on, you know, a handful here, but all of that to say is if you have kids that will buy in, in my opinion, you will win with less per se talent than if you have a bunch of all-stars who don't buy in and are willing to die for that program. You know, at the end of the day, guys, we're all trying to get to the same spot. Conventional wisdom and what has been done in the past has proven to be successful. Generationally, we know at the end of the day, it's about loyalty, it's about love, it's about hard work, it's about character. And these are principles that you guys are built on, that we were built on as young people. And we have innately, that is the fabric of any human being. We just have to find a way to get it out of them. And then... What we need to do then is once we've been able to create that in football, because you're exactly right, 14 programs in Southern Maryland have figured that out, and, and it comes together, and these kids come out in the field and they execute and play well, and now college coaches come down, and we're we're talking about, hey, we're not expecting you to love our kids because they're the fastest or the biggest or the strongest, but you best know that they're going to come out there and they're going to have this type of character trait, and they're going to go out and play and work to this level. But more importantly, we can't just stop there and allow them to understand that it exists here in this pocket of the game of football. they got to be able to translate that to real life. Mm-hmm. And that's where the, tra- the, the, the intentionality of the coaches and the mentors in these schools. But it speaks back to your point, Gene, is that when we ask about some of the fallacies in the school systems, the reality is is that we still have great people trying to do great things, and kids are, are coming out of our school systems better than they are when they come in because of these things, right? Because it's not like that everywhere. Sure. You know, it's just not. And, and, and the coaches in PG County care as well, but, yes, they may have their hands full to another level. I can't speak to that, but I can speak to what we got going on here. And with a great deal of pride, I'm like, look, these kids are going to come in college ready if that's where they choose to go. And that's been our message to the kids. Like, look, you come in, I don't care where you're coming from or what obstacles you might have in your life. Our job as mentor leaders and coaches in this world here at Calvert High School is to help you have as many choices and options when you graduate as possible. Mm-hmm. Now, if you choose to be the manager at Dagon on McDonald's and you graduate with your best GPA you could earn, which is a 3-3, then you know what? You're going to be the most dominant and pro- proficient McDonald's manager you can be. But we don't want that lot in life to happen to you because you had nothing else you could do. Mm-hmm. Doesn't mean you have to go to college. You're just helping them reach their potential. Absolutely. Yeah. No, 100%. Man. Yeah. I mean, not everybody can be, um, you know, a surgeon, right? No. Not, you ain't going to make 50 doctors on a football team. And man. we don't want 50 doctors. No. So mm-hmm. you're just trying to help them reach their full potential in life. 100%. Um, and, yeah. I mean, do you feel that obligation as a coach, like at the high school level, to set kids up for the real world, or are you just kind of grooming them to go be able to get a college education? No, they got because at the end of the day, what's more important than whatever education you get is that you're a great father and a great husband. When we look at the failures in today's world, it's not the guys who don't know how to work. It's the guys who don't know how to be a good man yeah. and, and their homes. You know, we, we, we need to create men of integrity. And, and, and that's, that goes back to everything, right? Like, as a, as a mentor leader in my role as a, as a coach of these kids and our coaches, we are looked at as what these kids should look to be as fathers and husbands. Mm-hmm. And, and whether they choose to be whatever, then wherever they go, they're called to use that platform, being a surgeon, being a coach, being a teacher, be it a car salesman, be it you know, a construction worker working on, you know, site management, whatever it is, you're called to use that platform as a passion and a calling because that's what you're called and gifted to do to impact and transform lives of others. And you can't do that unless it starts at home. You know, yeah. if you're not doing and building that at home, then you, you can't do it anywhere else. It's just completely fake. We have to be men of integrity. And so that's what we have to do. Well, one of the one of the cool things is I've seen people that didn't have that nucleus at home, that didn't have a father, didn't have a family. I've seen them come in. I mean, examples of guys that we played with have come into this circle, this family, and this is where they found their family. Yes. And they had a leader like you who essentially did take over that father figure for them because they didn't have anybody else. Yeah. So for that six months of that season, you're going into eight months of training and everything, That's that was you for yeah. them. Appreciate, but we all have that calling. 
right? Yeah. I've been able to stand in front of churches and talk to people, and they think because you're a coach that that's just innately what you're able to do. Not all coaches do it. And I'm like, no, you're missing it, man. Yeah. I said, whether I'm a coach, minister, or doctor, whatever, wherever we are, you, if you're selling a car and you might sell six cars a week, whatever it is, every single time someone comes to buy a car from you, it could be the best car buying experience they can have. Right. And they can leave there saying, man, I feel encouraged. Yeah. And, 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 and we don't necessarily have to say anything specific, but the way we live out and how we care for others can model and demonstrate everything anybody else needs to see. And it's contagious, man. It's yeah. so contagious. So to tra- translate that over to our business, like when I, when I realized I needed to hire help, it's bec- I was I was successful the first two or three years of business because I was taking the time to meet people after work hours, spend an hour, hour and a half talking to them, you know, talking about football or talking about whatever, you know. It's customer service. People want to have that friendly conversation with you. Well, then I would get – I just got to the point where there's so many of them and you're so busy and overwhelmed, I found myself being short with people. Yeah. Like, hey, man, look, I can't talk. I got to go. Like, yep. whatever, this costs this much, I, I'll send you an estimate. And then I was like, okay, well, shit, I got to stop doing that. <laughs> yeah. Like, because that's not what people want. Right. You know, so, like, you bring on guys like him to help share that workload and, and Robbie to help share that workload. And then it's like, okay, now, if, even if they, they may not be talking to me directly, they're still talking with somebody that's going to give them that attention. Yes. You know, and feel like they're being taken care of. And their yeah. values are the same. And their values are the same, right. 100%. Yep. And you we can't cr- do it all. We crave no. that internally, whether we like to admit it, there's people that like to say I'm an extrovert or whatever. We're not, we are, you said it before, the fabric of us, I feel like, I really truly believe this. We are meant to be social creatures in a tribe with, with relationships and interactions on a daily basis. Yep. So people do, genetically, they're craving that. What Gene just talked about, like, they want to sit down and talk to you for an hour oh, yeah. or have an interaction with you. How many customers do you go meet at 5, 30, 6 o'clock at night? And they're like, you want to come in and yeah, a lot. have a cup of coffee or a lot. Yep. you want a beer? A yeah, lot. It's like, look, man, like, like I got to get home, dude. Right, <laughs> like, right, right. <laughs> yeah, a lot. And then this also goes back to your point about the good old boy system. And people say, oh, the good old boy, the good. Dude, I've spent a lot of time becoming a good old boy. Okay, Absolutely. I want to cash in on the good old boys. Well, it's like a whole thing. It's like, <laughs> coach, do you have favors? You 100% have favors. Yeah. The guys that show up on time, the guys that work hard, the guys yeah. that say, yes, sir, let's go. Yeah, they're my favorites. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Of course we're going to have favorites. Yeah. I mean, who wouldn't? Who yeah. doesn't? Yeah. Yeah. When I, when and I to think speak to y'all's point, and I mean, cut you off, no, you're good. the intentionality of that, because you just spoke to it. Like, how do I? You can't do it all. No. But then... You have to put your people, your constituents, the people you work with, in positions where they can thrive and do, learn how to do that themselves. We're able to do that with our kids. So, like, we just went to Calvert Elementary School. We do it every three weeks, and we're working with the kids there. They've kind of earmarked as needing some mentorship and some guidance. we got 26 young men that come from Calvert High School that do that. We run our summer camps. We had seven different camps on campus at Calvert High School through One Heart Athletics, and in that we had – Almost 200 Calvert High School athletes who volunteered wearing blue and gold and served those kids. Those are the shining spots because, you know, that was probably one of the things that we missed for you guys is that we need to now help model what it should look like when I serve others and then put you in positions where you all at 16, 17 years old can serve others. If we can learn at 16, 17 years old, that could change your trajectory of what you choose your career pathway to be. When you start feeling that, that, unbelievable joy in your heart when you're able to provide a service and care for someone and you think that you're there to serve them, but all of a sudden it comes back to you because you've brightened some kid's day. Holy smokes. Now all of a sudden that fuels a fire that you want to continue to grow and make it larger. That's where it was for me at 70 years old, junior high school. But now we're, we're, we're doing that. And, and there's people at the board, Mr. Weber's one of them who sees it. And it's like, we need to create programs where this becomes part of our curriculums where you know, just as important as a kid gets a chance to learn this class and take this elective and that elective, we give a mentorship elective class where we can take kids away from here, put them in schools, and let them pour into the future Cavaliers or future Hurricanes. It's huge. It's yeah. huge. You building, know, building now you're giving those kids a chance to to live out what you're trying to model for these guys. No, that's understand. great, man. Yeah, it's awesome. Um, that's really awesome. So what you said just a minute ago about putting people in positions to thrive – that's like my job is kind of turned into just, you know, management, right? Hiring people, firing people, changing people's perspective, kind of organizing the whole system. Yes. 
it's hard. Like we talk about it when you, as a manager, you feel like you put somebody in a position and you never really, you know, like you feel like you set them up for the failure. You know, like maybe you didn't give them the tools to succeed or you knew they weren't – like you wanted to give them a shot, but you didn't really know – like you knew in the back of your mind they weren't going to be able to do it. Yep. So that's something that I'm learning to try to navigate is to put people in positions to thrive without setting them up for failure. True. You know, and yep. I, that's got to be it's the tough. same deal with, with the coach and a team. A team, thing. working with coaches, working with other people. At the end of the day is that and, – and the crazy time of COVID taught us this. You know, and it's been a cliche, you know, live life as if you're not guaranteed tomorrow. Well, the reality is we had we had a time where tomorrow was stripped from us for whatever reason, a lot of crap behind all that. But the reality is, is that when I was going through that and what I was able to go through was like, hey, this allowed me to repurpose, and refocus. I still had the same responsibility. Those young people and those coaches that we were working with still needed to hear the same things. We just didn't have football to do it. So whereas if football was my only, you know, thing in life and I was a transactional man, I was losing my mind. If I was a teacher and all my responsibility was to teach math curriculum or English curriculum, then I was losing my mind. But the reality is those things are things we all do. It's not who we are and it's not what we're, what we're there to help people become. I'm not trying to make kids become football players. I'm trying to make them become great men. So we just had to pivot. And again, because I was a football coach, I still had connections with people that knew me. So we were going to use that call, reach out to kids every week, set up video Zoom calls. Our technology grew exponentially because now we're figuring out ways to communicate in different ways than we were before. Right. And so here's what I understood and learned, though. I don't want to set myself up, and, and a lot of people in positions of authority and leadership end up doing this, and, and I have to keep myself humbled and thinking about this on a regular the best way that I can lead is to lead through my own personal flaws because, and, and then teaching others that as well. Because, you know, when anybody else knows that we screwed up and we're not willing to admit it, we lose all credibility and we're watched. As leaders, we're watched. So I find the best times that I shine is when I'm standing in front of the team and I'm looking at them and say, guys, I screwed this up. Please forgive me, man. And I said, but this is how we're going to make it better. And then now we go through the pattern of like reconstructing and building it back after I made a mistake. And so we got to accept that we're going to make mistakes being out in front. The people that we're leading are going to make mistakes too. So how do we train them up and how to get through those failures? Because if we're not trying, then we're, if, we're, if we're not failing, we're not trying, right? Mm -hmm. That's right. Yep. You know, so we got to let the guys fail. playing too small. Right. You got to yes. like, let the guys fail. Right. You know, yeah, failure is a big part of it. Big part of it, you know. I've Fail learned, forward is what they say. So we make a mistake going forward. Learn yep. the less best lessons of my life. Unfortunately, have been through failure. Yep. You know, um, that's something that Gene has actually and kind of really helped me with. Is like if I'm wrong or I've made a mistake, I I feel comfortable going to him and saying and taking account. That's one of your big things is accountability. Yes. Like. I don't want to hear 10,000 excuses about why Robbie didn't do this so you didn't get your part of the job done. Um, and, and sometimes he's got to stop us in the group chat and be like, you, both of you guys got to stop saying it's your fault. Like somebody's got to, somebody's got to take the blame here. Yeah. <laughs> but, well, yeah, and I don't like it when people come to me with problems without already trying to think about a solution too. Right. Yeah. Say, look, man, I got my own problems. Like there's mm -hmm. a bunch of problems right now. Yep. Don't yeah. bring me your problems unless you've already half-assed thought about some solutions. Yeah. Like, yes. Like, yes. You know, yeah. like, <laughs> but I feel confident coming to you saying, I failed in this aspect. Here's what I'm doing to try to get better at it. Or here's yeah. what I'm doing to correct the situation. And it, in my failures, he's never been like, he's never gotten on me for the actual admitted failure. It'll be, what are you doing to correct it? How are you pushing through this adversity? Mm -hmm. And I think that just, it's everything in life. Like yes. taking accountability for your failures and how are you going to correct it? Yes. And I think that maybe a lot of that was probably instilled in football. Well, you know, the reality is this. If, if we keep our eyes on the real mission, right, and, and, and again, you guys, I know it's a different platform than what I'm in, but it's still the same. The mission is the people, your people that work for you and the people you're, you're, you're impacting when you go out there and, and, and you do something that the better their life because of what you're able to take and change in their homestead or in their business. <laughs> And, and be it very point specific and very important when you only get to see them once in, in a year or two or ever. I, I get it. But the reality is it's still about those people. 
the people, right? Sure. Yep. And, and and is business going to be messy? Absolutely. Are you going to go out there and, and, and run a pipe and all of a sudden it becomes catastrophic because we didn't know that there was something that we're going to run into? Okay. You know, but when you're transparent, you're honest. And at the end of the day, you still want to make it right for that person over there and you still deliver. It's, it's all good. Yeah. And then with the people that you're leading, when it's about you, man, it's about like what's going on at home, dude. Like, you know, are you doing all right? You know, are you taking time? Because I see you over here busting screws beyond the business hours. You're you're over there working on gear. Man, I know when I'm in that place, I'm taking my mind off something, man. How are things going at home? When you go there, and, and, and no mistakes made is more important than still putting the mission of those people in your life first. Yeah. yeah. And at the end of the day, if, if everybody I'm working with mistake-free or with mistakes, our kids are the most important thing in our lives. And so, like... And our connections and, and, and my relationship with these coaches. So when a coach looks at me and we're, we're hitting it and we're at each other's throats because we're hot, we're tired, we're tested, we got this going on, we got that going on, we got our own things going on in our personal lives, stop. Aren't we here for the kids? If we are, then, then, then right now we're throwing a wrench in our cogs because we're slowing things down and we can't afford to slow down. Let's put it away and get focused back on the kids. I love you, man. I screwed up. You screwed up. Let's go. So it's got to get to right, and the sooner we can get to that, the faster we can move on. Yeah. You know, let egos and pride get out of the way. Got yeah. to, yeah. In, in business, it's tough because I mean, obviously, we have numbers to hit and quotas to hit just to break even, right? And then you got you got goals to like everybody wants to make more money, and the guys in the field want to make more money, salesmen want to make more money, the company needs to make more money. So it's like it's very money driven. So yes, it's, sir. It's it's very easy to get away from values like that. Yes. But, like, we just had this talk on in our meeting this morning. It's like when you – if you do the work and you do it the right way, the money's going to come. Yes. You know what I'm saying? It's like just focus on what you're doing. Keep the path. Like, I know we're doing it fucking the right way. Yes. And then the money's going to follow with it. Like, you ain't got to worry about the money. Who's in control here? You know what I'm saying? Right. So – and I feel like it's the same as, like, your thing. Like, you, you, you operate a certain way. You have policies and procedures in place. You hold your men to a standard. The wins are going to come. Yes, yes. You know, everything else and is going to come. You got to you got to look at it that way. You know, and like it's hard for me because like I'm in the office. Like I'm the one that has to do accounts payables, accounts receivables. So like I'm on Jimmy's ass all the time. Dude. Yes. Like, hey man, Martin's weren't there on this one. Yes. Like, what are you doing? Yes. Because I have to to keep yes. operating. Yes. You know, but at the same time, it's like you have to. You got to maintain certain values and have relate have relationships with your guys and your team, and then know that if you. Do that, you're going to win more than you lose. Yes, you know. Yes, we can't. We can't look past the bottom line and and, and cut off our nose to spite our face. We can't. No. But because uh, that's a level of professionalism, like I can't go out there and expect me to have an impact on our kids and be sloppy at what we do on the X and O side of things. Right. Because the program will go from eighty to forty real yeah. quick. Mm-hmm. So like the only way we can have kids out there is to be competent in what we do. But now. Being competent also means that, you know, we have to be competent on the other end, too, which is yeah. being promoters of good, healthy lifestyles. I mean, it speaks to that, right? I mean, I know, Gene, you're hard, and, and you work hard, and you want to, to drive that bottom line because you care about taking care of yeah. people and allowing them to have a lifestyle that they want to have. Mm-hmm. But, you know, we're here on, on, on Friday before Christmas, and, and you guys are planning a, a, a Christmas party for your people. And, and the people working with you, they're, they're, they've been – Cooking a lamb for 24 hours. Yeah. You know, they're bringing stuff like that. Man, that, that speaks to the fact that we have an organization and, and a community here in y'all's business where people care about one another. And that, you know, and that's the way we've always visioned it. I got coaches on our field that have their babies or their kids on our field a lot when they don't have, you know, anybody to watch their kids. And I love that because what better way for our players to see the way a father should be fathering his child than seeing it firsthand on the field where a coach is dedicating his time to grow you as a player and as a young man and also doing it side by side and feels safe enough to have his son or daughter right there on the field with him. Yeah. You know, and so like you guys have an, a program or an organization here, a family in, in McKenzie Contracting where obviously the people who are working with you, they care. I mean yeah. who's they're they're preparing a lamb twenty four hours. Yeah. Yeah, that was a big deal, man. Yeah, yeah, because they wanted to like process the whole lamb. So yes, like, I went down to Amish country this week and literally wrestled a lamb through it. I hog tied it and threw it in the back of my truck. 
Come on. Still breathing, buddy. That's and I, crazy. And I showed up, and them, them, them Spanish boys went to town on it. Man. That's how cool it is, man. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely a cultural thing for sure. You know? Um, you think, like, in you know, at the schools, like how Calvert might be diverse? Yes. Well, in construction, brother, you got yes. I mean, literally people from every walk of life. Yes. <laughs> like, you know? You know? <laughs> what's, what's weird about when we talked, I was going to hit on this earlier about diversity, is uh, even though we didn't have the necessarily the – the broadness that you have in other places or the high end, low ends of the spectrum within that community from our class, there was guys that came from a lot of money, guys that I won't say names that I knew I had to give them a ride to practice because they didn't have a car. Their parents didn't have a car. They lived over in this trailer park, wherever, and they were in this situation. And never once while I was on that field, did I give a shit about where you came from, who your parents were, what color you were. And it didn't matter. It never mattered on the field, ever. You know, that's great you bring that up because, gentlemen, listen, we live in a world that wants to use social media and everything else as a way to divide people, mm-hmm. and it drives me crazy. And and so, like, there's things that I stick to as our part of our ethos and our program that when I got there was going to matter. And and, and, and it's it, it may be because of my military background, but it, and it can be a little eccentric, but if you start small, then it can get bigger. Here, here are some of the things that we do that because that's important. That's freaking important because football should never be a place where we see differences in one another. We don't allow the uniforms to go home. We require our kids to have certain color cleats. We require our kids to have certain color accessories. We do all these things because at the end of the day, when I have four captains walking out, and if we have a white jersey on, and that captain's been taking that white jersey home, and they don't have a working washer and dryer, and so that white jersey after the last game three weeks ago was ridden through the mud, is still dirty or dingy, or he cleaned it in his, in his sink, or whatever it might be. He walks out there as a captain in front of everybody else, and maybe no one else notices, but he can feel that the other three guys whose parents were able to put together a, 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 a wash in which they soaked the jersey right after the game and they cleaned it up and it comes out pearly white. There is a dis- difference right there. There is a social economic difference that is felt not by the three kids that have it, but maybe by that other one who doesn't. Because, like, hey, I know when I go home I don't have a working washing and dryer. I may not have a meal. But when I step on that field, you shouldn't feel that. Hmm. You know, and it's not, we're not trying to give handouts necessarily, but we're trying to give our kids the same start yeah. and then yeah. empower them. That's and that so, military coming out, bud, because the military breaks you down where yeah. everybody's equal because ain't none of you worth the shit, right? Now. <laughs> right, you know, like, right, right, yeah. right. Yeah. right. Yeah. But Which I, is good. I, yes. I mean, the mentality is great. I had that in the police department, too, where it you didn't care about the color, the socioeconomic status of the guy next to you. Just, can you protect me? Can you save my life? Are you willing to save my life? Are you willing to put your life on the line for me? Yeah, absolutely. But I will say, coming into that, I already had that in my mind. It was already instilled in my mind because of the things that we went through together on a football field. It yes. can seem like it's just a game. I can promise you it is not. Um I remember when all of this stuff was going on, and I don't want to get super political about it, but there was super, there's a lot of things going on, a lot of hate towards police officers in the media. I posted something on my Facebook that was like a knock at the, the, the police hate or whatever. And then I had another guy who I had played football with, who you coached as well, <clears throat> comment back and kind of get to arguing with me about a racial thing. Mm-hmm. And I said, brother, hold on a second. You know me. So what I do, I call him. Mm-hmm. I said, bro, you know me. Yeah. And he said, damn, dude, you're right. Like, it got the best of me for a second. But because we shared that bond in football and we had that, whatever whatever that special thing, that love that happens on the field, like, he knows. He's like, nah, that, that ain't you. I know that. I'm sorry. I got to check myself for a second. Yep. Yeah. No, there's it definitely feels like there's a um, – the social media adds to it, but it also it just feels like there's something out there trying to divide people. Mm-hmm. And when it comes down to it, man, like, you come here and between us and everybody that works here from different backgrounds or us dealing with different customers or – Talking to old friends from school. I mean, the, the divide's not there. Nope. At least in our community, people get along for the most part. Absolutely. You know? Um, it ain't roses all the time, but it's definitely not like, no. you know, throwing rocks at each other. Nope. That's not that's not existent. Nope. Nope. So. I've, I never felt it. <clears throat> I never felt it when I was in school. And I know now looking back on it, there wasn't things that I was looking for that maybe now I know as an adult, like that were kind of red flags about the way they were being raised or the socioeconomic status that they came from um, <clears throat> or the family that they came from, that there was probably something going on, but I didn't know to look for it when I was there in high school. And it never mattered to me. No. It never mattered to me in football. 
like it just I think that we're losing that in community because you see people dropping out of sports. I got to I got to think that the number of people playing sports is probably down significantly over sure. the last decade and I think we're losing that as young men that relationship with other men. Oh dude, I can't I don't like the snowflake shit, man. Mm-hmm. Like we've hired and fired <laughs> some young guys like Cody, right? Mm-hmm. Tough young dude. Mm-hmm. Driven, motivated, Willing to learn, willing to get dirty, work long hours. Yep. Come in at fucking four thirty in the morning, leave at six o'clock at night. Mm-hmm. Betty play hard fo- worker. Betty play football. <laughs> but then you hire young kids. You can tell they've never held a shovel before. Yes. You can tell they don't know the difference between a screwdriver and a hammer. Yes. Really, like it's mm-hmm. not even that exaggerated. Yes. And it's just like, dude, like can't work with you, man. Right. Like you, like, you can't start that far behind. Yes. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> right. And it's just. It's like, good God, man. Well, at the end of the day, like, and and truth be told, there's going to be some situations where maybe a kid doesn't experience that. But when they do, do they want to get in there and get dirty? Yeah. They want to get in and get after it. Do they have the mindset? And and, and that's really the biggest part of, like, divisiveness. And then also their stuff. And and this is where we're trying to change and turn off the way we think. Because social media is an example of that. Like, you're either negative or positive. You're either adding value or you're not. You can't be in the middle. And, and I want people to make choices, right? And so it's like, fellas, if we're going to add value to others around us, then you have to be intentionally doing that. And if you're not, because you're saying you're taking a back seat, then guess what? You're intentionally not adding value to others. If you're positive and you're promoting positivity and you're taking in positive stuff, well, then you, can't, you don't have room for negativity. But if you're always looking at the things that, that stimulate you from a negative perspective, then guess what? You have no room for positivity, and it's the way you're going to look at the world too. And yeah. it's very know, contagious. Yeah, it is. Negativity is contagious, man. Like yeah, we talked yeah. about that. Just in, like in a crew of guys, you got one laborer with a bad attitude. The whole crew has a bad attitude. After, yes, after just a couple of days. Yes, you know. Mm-hmm. Yes, and it's like, man, you got you got to cut the bad apple out. One hundred percent. It's going to be challenging. You guys are out in the work world, and you're out in the hot sun sometimes, or you're out in the the cold weather sometimes. <laughs> Those things can be miserable. I get it. But you know what? Get that mindset where I get to go to work. I get to do this. I get to do that. Because sometimes, yeah. you know, as being the leader, right, guys, I just like to go out there and turn the hammer one time or freaking twist a screwdriver one time and not have to think about anything else and just go home to see my wife. But when you're the guy in charge, never stops. it never stops. No. It never stops. And, 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 and so sometimes you just wish you could just turn it off, but you can't. Oh, you can't. Yeah. You know, so you have to be able to, to raise your head and put it on the pillow every night and know that you did it right. You did it well. Yeah, that you're trying your best. Yep. Yeah. You're trying your best. Right. Yeah. And, you know, we've said, too, recently, like, it's like, you know, I'm fairly confident if we give it our sh- best shot to grow this into what we want it to be, it might take longer than we think. It might take more trial and tribulation than we think. But we'll get there. Yes. It'll eventually happen. Absolutely. You know, um, so and that's that's a good way to approach life in general. Yes. Yeah, you have to look at it that way. It, it, everything can't be super transactional on a day to day basis either. Like you can't sit back and look at <clears throat> wins and losses or stats of that practice for that day to put it back into football. Like it's overall, did we get better today? Did my guys put forth the effort to get better today? Yes. Are we all committed on the same path to getting better today? If you did, it's a win. Yes. And that it makes it easier to have hard conversations too when you know that you gave it your best shot. Like Job, like a, a recent job. It's like, look, man, I know my guys did the best they could and our management communicated well and we put a lot of time and effort into this. It's like, and then when the customer's dodging, he doesn't want to give you a check. It's like, it, it makes it easier for you to be like, look, I know we gave you a good product <laughs> yes, and we communicated well. It's like, I need to meet you and collect the money. Yes. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yes. Like you have no excuse not to meet with me right now. 100%. <laughs> right. Yes. And it's 100. easier to have a conversation with him, too, on my side of things when things might not be going well or things aren't, you know, exactly ideal. Um, and I am and I tell him, or we already, and he already knows, we have the conversation. I say, look, brother, I'm all in. We're on the same path together. I'll make the same sacrifices that you make yes. to get here, and the rest is going to work out. Absolutely. And Absolutely. And sometimes it, you can't, you can't, and again, people in charge have to be one, I hate to say it, but grand manipulators, you got to be able to pe- get people to do what you need them to do, and they got to be control freaks. 
And and those two things are two edged swords. Mm-hmm. We have to keep them in check, right? Because the control piece allows you to be able to put a lot of things in motion and keep them going in the direction you want to go in. But at the same time, we can't hold on too tight. You can't. Yeah. And then the grand manipulation thing is we've got to learn how to balance that with motivating and getting our people to go in the direction we want to go without treating them as a pawn, you know. But yeah. to not have those two skill sets – things are going to fall apart. So you might look at it in a negative connotation of, of grand manipulator. And when I look at it from you as Rick Sneed, I say, he's not a grand manipulator. He cares enough about people to intrinsically find what drives that person. You have to have a relationship with that person. You have to care enough about that person to know what motivates him yes. to get the best out of him every single day. Yes. So yes, the byproduct is helping you at the end of the day, win games and losses and stuff, but you have put the time in to have that relationship to know what drives that young man to work harder. 100%. Yeah. Yeah. And it's important. And right. I don't think that people do that. No, no, no. But you guys have spoke about this over and over and over again. And the reality is, is that not knowing what tomorrow brings, keeping your faith, be it coaching, be it running a business like you guys are running, um, sometimes you can't know what tomorrow is going to bring, but being around the right people gives you the confidence it's all going to be okay. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's I, what's cool about us doing our own thing, too. It's like you're able to you're able to create the work environment that you want. Yes. You know, mm-hmm. which is comes with a lot of headaches and a lot oh, of risk. You care a lot more. You care a lot. Yeah, you're, <laughs> yes. you're kind of vested in it. You know? yes. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So. It's, it's tough. I, I have buddies that are that have jobs that, um, you know, they just work for the man. And <sighs> if they just go in and they win and they lose, like it's a winner or it's a loss. Yeah, I made a little bit more on blah, blah, blah. This is one of my best friends. I care about his family. I care about the well-being and the and the trajectory of his business because that's what supports his family. So if I lose, it hits me so much more. But on the flip side of that, he knows I give a shit. Yeah. Like you're going to get more out of me because I've bought into this relationship and this program. Um, not to like switch things, but this is something I've been dying to ask you for a while is when you see a young man step into a program, mm-hmm. Let's take athletic ability aside. What is the one intangible that you look for in a young man where you know, I got something here? Uh, we are a program that that we have the benefit in our county where we allow any kid coming from middle school with a clean slate. So it doesn't matter where you come from. And so the fact that you want to step in, knowing exactly what goes in our program now, that, that yes, we're going to coach football at a high level, but we're also going to require you to be upstanding people in the classroom and in the community – if you're willing to take a step out and take on that opportunity as, as a responsibility to you and you're willing to progress and move forward is the starting point for all of them, you know, because then that means that, that you're thinking outside yourself. And that's really the vice that we're fighting in everybody, right, is like, you know, it's not about me. If we can start breaking away that, that thing that we're all born with where we make life about ourselves and we can – reach that and stay away and try to intentionally get up in the morning and say, you know what, there's something bigger than I'm working for than myself. We get to that point, we start finding a man like that, then we're making making progress. And that's what yeah. we're looking for, 100%. That's cool, man. That's really cool. I could sit here and talk X's and O's with you and stuff <laughs> all day long, but this is the kind of stuff that it's always felt to me like it's bigger. It's always, since even since I met you when I was 16 years old, it's always, you've always had this, I don't know, Thing I knew was bigger than X's and O's with you. I appreciate it. You know, here's the deal, guys, and you brought it up a minute ago. I feel bad for the guys that, that I've coached, the guys that you guys have grown up with, who are just punching the, the, the clock and earning a paycheck, guys. I mean, how hard are some of the guys that you guys grew up with, guys that I've coached, how hard is life when your 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 drive and your purpose is to earn the money, to get this stuff, to do this, to do that, you know, everything is just so shallow and unfulfilling. And we have on our tombstones the date we are born and the day we die. And that dash in the middle is really all that matters. And so how are we making that dash count? And it, it, it's like, so I, I got a nice house. I got this. I got that. All those things are important. And you know what? Some people can do it the way we're doing it where we're trying to use whatever we're doing as a vehicle to impact and grow lives around us. And we can still have a nice house. That's mm-hmm. okay. It, our resources grow, so you know what? It allows us to do things more for others. And when you have that continuum, everything takes care of itself. But you got to think, like, 
when I leave, and that's why it's so important. When we talk about growing young men through our program to be great husbands and fathers and giving them an opportunity to feel that sensation and joy of impacting the life of somebody else. When you can figure that out and they get on a trajectory, then all of a sudden when they leave high school, their paths assimilate to people who think the same way. You know what? It could put you in a line in which you are around a lady who thinks the same way. Changes the type of spouse that you end up having. Changes the type of family you end up having. Conversely, if you're driven because you think that you have to have the almighty dollar, and you think you have to have this lavish house, well, then your circle of friends includes other people who think that way. You end up getting a lady that way. Mm -hmm. But then all of a sudden you go back to playing ball with Jimmy Lebonsky and Gene McKenzie and, and playing underneath Coach Franks, or it might be, and you were taught a different way way of living a value that is instilled in your heart but you've ignored it you've tasted it and it was good but you've gone a different direction and now you're eight years in this marriage you're in a huge home and you're in this job that you hate but you're making money to support all the cool things that you think you need to have and none of it's bringing me happiness at that point how hard is it to change gears and get back on track it's tough man you know what i mean tough and, and, and so, like, if you're going to work it's a rat that race, man, if you're going to work that much, why don't you do it around something you love? Yeah. And if, sure. if, and if at the end of the day, it's about people, you can do a whole lot of different things and still be able to influence and change people. Yeah. And, and I think it's just crazy how much of, of my life, I don't know, maybe it's just me individually, but how much of my life values come from the things we learn in that that room with those guys at Huntingtown. And we've talked about it before on here is one of the biggest lessons that I learned from you guys in that time. And it's, it's just carried me the rest of my life. Cause I might not have had it as a 16 year old boys accountability and accountability in a film room after a practice, after a game, the one thing I cared about was I didn't want my, my picture, my video being brought up here of me being lazy or me. It wasn't even just missing a block because right. you guys didn't even harp on that. It was the, the lack of effort. I wouldn't want a lack of effort being brought up against the guys I was in the trenches with because I loved those guys. I cared about their opinion of me. It, that was where I got my joy from was them knowing and vice on the flip side of that when you put up something like, okay, the X is going back and actually hitting the safety. He actually busted his ass to get across the field, which never happens, and he blocked the safety. Mm -hmm. That would be something you'd highlight in that. I want Gene and the rest of the guys to see that and be like, all right, Jimmy's busting his ass. Then it becomes contagious and everybody starts. But the – the entire thing was I got the joy out of my brothers knowing that I did great and I don't want them to be able to know I'm having accountability. I don't want them to see me not not giving effort. And that's carried me forever. That's awesome. Forever. It's awesome. We all have somebody we got to be accountable to. Mm -hmm. you know, God is the ultimate accountability uh, being. But the reality is there's nothing wrong with having people you trust to hold you accountable. Yeah. Because, you know – Somebody's got to be able to care and love you enough to look at you and say, "Dude, you can do better." Because that's where you get that's where you get your best. Yeah. And then when you're at the top, if you don't have that type of person or some type of check and balances where someone can hold you accountable, that's where you can stumble and fall. And again, a lot of people are looking at you, you know, and and, and they're gonna know they're watching you so close. They're gonna know when you mess up. And mm -hmm. so hold yourself accountable, own it, and move on. And dag on it, people learn to trust you because you obviously being in that position have a skill set that others don't have. I mean, you don't get to that spot without and have that level of success if you don't have something going for you. So they trust you, but you want to grow that trust, grow when you make a mistake and let them grow with you 100%. Yeah. I, again, I, I just can't, like, I hope parents, like, I don't know who's going to listen to this, but I hope parents, <laughs> I hope, I put par hope parents listen to this and understand how important it is to get those young men on a football field. Or just any type of sports any, field where you're taught, like, yeah. values and being held accountable. Yeah. Being learned how to be criticized or yelled mm -hmm. at or, or whatever, you know. Like, that's another thing, man. You hire young people and they don't know how to take any type of criticism. Or, yeah. like, it's like, dude, like I, it's not personal, buddy. No. You messed up. Yeah. Fix it. Yeah. Like, that's all I'm saying. Like, yeah. And you, I remember you had told me, you had, I, specifically from you, I remember my junior year when you were coach, you were coaching receivers. Yes. And I wasn't the fastest guy. Right. I wasn't the strongest guy. I wasn't the best receiver, but you knew I was going to, I was going to block people yes. really well. And you told me what my strong suits were, what my not so strong suits were. And then when you'd yell at me or something, I remember you, this stuck with me. 
when I stop yelling at you, that's when you should be worried about it. Absolutely. I'm yelling at you because I care. Yes. I can see it in y'all's <laughs> business. Like if you're constantly coming behind a guy and you're like, look, dude, you can do it this way, do it that way. That's showing that you see value in that guy. The moment you stop doing that, that guy needs to start understanding. He starts looking for another job because Gene yeah. McKenzie's starting to bring down the thumb, the thunder. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, because yeah, you you stop investing into that person. Yes, and you stop investing into them because you're looking at how to replace them. Yes, mm-hmm. that's all it is. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, so hundred percent, man. I think uh, I don't know, man. I just want to reiterate, wrapping up, man, that you've definitely created. A reputation for yourself in the county and teaching young man, you're doing a good job. So Thank you so much. Keep it up. And you guys keep it up. I'm proud of you guys. Thank you. You know, like I said, not everybody can coach and everybody can run a contracting business like you guys do. But wherever we are, because you guys are having a chance to impact lives that I don't get to impact. Uh, but at the same time, there should be consistency in it. You know, if we all come from the same pedigree and the same thread, the consistency should be, you know what? We care about our community. We care about our people. and We're going to help make this, pe- this, this community grow to be something better than it is now. And if we all have that same type of mindset, we can accomplish that through whatever we're doing, whatever we do. But it doesn't make us who we are. We're yep. good, good, <clears throat> faith-believing Americans who love our community and love the people we work for. Yeah, and and to double down on what Gene was saying, what, what you're doing is working. I know you see it a lot, but you have two guys that are pretty good friends that came from your program. That relationship was established in that program. We're, we're one of many out there thank you and, and that's a we are a byproduct of rick sneed and that pedigree of coaches that have made this county better in my opinion well thank you and thank you for having me on to share some of my stories yeah, man. appreciate I, it i could talk with you all day <laughs> <laughs> let's go eat some eat some lamb drink some beers yes all right man hoka hey yes